welcome back to Steel TV and thank you for joining the Average Golfer for my evaluation top five super game improvement irons. There's a category for you. Uh, certainly split the irons this year up into three categories. I'm going to start, as I say, with the big power bats, the super game improvement irons, as I'm going to call them. I'm going to get to my top five very, very soon. Um, basically, I have reviewed each of these clubs on an individual basis and you'll be able to check those videos out in the back catalogue on the YouTube channel if you want some in-depth detail. Today I'm just going to do a very simple overview and why I got my, how I arranged my top five. Yesterday morning I went back and I hit all of these clubs again and got some new dry ball data just to refresh my memory and uh, put together my top five. Didn't change too greatly from what I thought it would be. Um, other things that I've considered, so we've looked at performance, in terms of the dry ball data, uh, looks, so visually how I think they look, um, the feel of these clubs, even though it's not something you're gonna necessarily look for in this type of club, but certainly feel. And I've included price as well, an important um, aspect I think that's often ignored, uh, but I'm gonna also look at the price of these clubs. So that's my criteria, that's how I put the list together. The question you wanna know is what starts proceedings off? So in descending order, here we go, here's number five. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's the TaylorMade CGB iron. And uh, for me, this goes in at number five, certainly not top of the list, and for good reason. It was a little bit too bulky, a little bit too heavy. It's packed with tungsten weighting in the right hands. That can be a help for people. Low CG, big sweet spot, as you'd expect. But first of all, on looks, um, not my cup of tea. Like I said, just a little bit too much going on. Um, in terms of the design of this club. Again, a lot of club head behind the ball. Feel-wise, getting just that little bit too clicky. Didn't get any sort of response really in terms of into the hands. So again, questionable in that sense. Priced at 799, so again, fairly highly priced. Performance-wise, let's throw some dry ball data of how I performed yesterday with this club. Now you'll see a quick overview, 5-2 spin, which I think is very good with this kind of strength of loft club. This is lofted at 29.5 degrees, by the way, on this 7-iron, the CGB. Uh, 163 carry, peaking out at 96 uh, feet, uh, launch angle at 19.2. Fairly decent numbers across the board. Like I said, it certainly wasn't my best performing club, but in the right hands, maybe that could be. But that's number five. Next on is number four. Yeah, number four is the Callaway Rogue X, and this is certainly the power bat in terms of the strength of loft. They've gone all the way to 27 degrees with a seven iron, so uh, yeah, work that one out if you can. But interestingly enough, like I said, you'll see the launch angle is not too dissimilar to other clubs that are within this category. So as always, you know, you've got to consider these things. Plenty of tungsten weighting yet again um, to precisely pinpoint where they want to put this CG for maximum assistance uh, for this type of club. Priced in at, what have we got on price on these? Uh, it's in at 745, so very similar price, an expensive club. I prefer the looks of this club from the uh, position number five, bit of shiny material, they always like a bit of high uh, shiny stainless steel that appears in here. I think overall it's a decent looking club. It's bulky in its overall sort of height and width, but not too much in terms of the back end of this club. So again, more preferable for me in terms of how it looked. Uh, in terms of performance yesterday, You'll see the spin number dropped off, and again, because of the strength of the loft, it's dropped right down to four or five in terms of spin. It is the one club that is considerably longer than the other clubs in this category, once again, because of that stronger loft at 175. Uh, carry, peak height was 100 feet, so again, still getting the ball right up and out there and launching at 18.5 degrees. So again, not massively different, strong launch, not necessarily affecting how this ball up. Uh, launches uh, how this club launches the golf ball but that's number four for me next up what's at number three yes it is the ping g700 fairly new on this on the market in the last few months and an interesting move from ping something quite different hollow body construction in the iron similar to what we've seen in the p790s there is a lot of low uh, and heel and toe extreme perimeter weighting in this yet again um, but this hollow body construction is all about sort of face flex. And again, maybe have a look at the, um, the full video on this one. Uh, it performs very, very well. I think it scores highly in terms of looks. It's probably 
one of the best kind of looks in terms of a game improvement iron that I've seen on the marketplace. It's certainly a lot different than I've seen and it appeals to the eye and it looks a quality build, but it comes with a price tag. These are 949. Uh, for seven irons so extremely high in price which obviously marks it down in terms of where it is in the leaderboard performance let's have a look at some dry ball data hard to argue with this one really like i said um 5 2, 50 spin 165 carry very consistent in terms of front to back numbers there none of your flyers so dispersion very good 108 peak height and launching at almost 21 degrees Arguably this could have been number one in the top five. Um, the reason it's not is simply because of the price bracket in 949. It's been marked down due to the fact that it's real, real top end in terms of price. However, it's hard to knock this in terms of performance in this game improvement market. Right, that's three. Let's see what's at number two. Yeah, this is the Titleist AP1, a real class act here. There's no great gimmicks, there's no great things going on from Titleist and what they're claiming this thing to do. Uh, interesting in that um, you've got an undercut cavity set of irons from sort of the wedges up to six iron um, and then into the five and four iron. It's again that hollow body construction. Interesting for me because I think that's something that we could see a lot more of. Uh, during latter part 2018 and 2019 in iron sets because it's certainly a change in what's been happening. Um, looks a really good club, arguably this could be in the game improvement category, um, so it kind of crosses over, it's not overly bulky. Real class act in terms of how it looks for me, and performance again, very very good indeed, and here's some dry ball data once again from yesterday, we'll very quickly go through. So quick overview, 5 one thirty spinning, 162 carry, uh, launching peak height 102, launching 20.5 degrees, and again, front to back numbers, very, very good, dispersion, very good. Difficult this one to separate again, I think positions one, two, and three, very hard to separate, and the AP1 is a real, real good performer. Price-wise, what have we got? 699, so again, more reasonably priced in terms of what we've seen so far for the AP1s, and. Hard to argue with this club, to be honest with you, a real good solid performer, but it's kept off the number one and top spot by what? Here we go, the number one super game improvement iron, as rated by the average golfer, is... Yes, it is from Taylor Made, and it's the M4 iron. Um, I've tested most of these clubs, both on and off the golf course, but I've tested the M4, I took it out to... Um, so a grand day earlier on the year when we were looking at trying to see whether or not these low spin numbers that game improvement irons if they do affect if a ball is stopping on greens or not and i think that in that video certainly for me i was more than happy without these game improvement irons stop on greens so they sort of got high launch low spinning yes but uh, a steep descent angle and i sort of happy that that is the case here the tailor made for me m4 looks the part it's not too bulky. I like the way the, again, this is very much this BMW M series, colouring it in the tailor-made range of irons this year. I like it. It appeals to the eye. It's got a thick top line, but it's not too bulky overall. Priced in again, I think these are the lowest priced club, interesting enough, at 649 for a set of seven irons. So it's the lowest priced as well. Quick look at performance on this on dry ball data yesterday. So spinning at 5126, 167 carry, 102 height, 19.6 degrees of launch. Now just on that spin number you'll see there, shots one and two let the spin number down considerably and arguably this could have been a five and a half thousand revs spinning. Seven iron and I think at the loft this is and again let's set it's 28.5 degrees so again Strongly lofted, but not affecting the launch, not affecting height, and I don't think affecting stopping on greens. For me, it ticks every box, and that's the reason it's in at the number one spot. So, that's my top five super game improvement irons. I'm gonna be looking next video up will be the game improvement category, and then I'll go into the player irons, as they call them. Hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you like the video, comment down below. Hopefully you've tried some of these clubs, you might have some of them in your bag. I think the important thing to mention is this, that is my top five. Your top five could be completely flipped and reversed to that. It's all about personal opinion. You getting out there, trying these golf clubs yourself, but I hope it's give you some guidance and some understanding as to why I've come up with that top five. Right, 
that's me done. So until next time, see you very soon.